Hi, and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. This is the painting that I'm going to show you um, today. It's um, silver birches or aspens, uh, a lovely woodland, and I've painted it with a sort of twilight atmosphere. I'm trying to get that sort of misty, beautiful, glowing evening light. I used a photograph from Pixabay as inspiration, and I shall leave a link to that photograph in the description below. As usual I'll be using a limited palette today it's alizarin crimson, burnt sienna, raw sienna, perylene green and sap green. This is the photograph I've kind of um, zoomed in a little bit from the reference photograph and I'm just going to be inspired by it. Here you can see that I've drawn in just the few, a few main trees and I've used masking fluid to paint out a few of the paler areas of the aspen or birch bark. This will protect those white areas or light areas so that I can paint freely over them and then add detail a bit later. And I can add that wet on dry once the wet in wet's done. The first thing I'm going to do is create that lovely golden, pinky golden, peachy glow. Um, I'm going to paint that wet in wet and so I'm using a large wash brush to wet the page all over and then this is varying mixtures of alizarin crimson, burnt sienna and raw sienna for the sky and then I'll drop in varying amounts of sap green and perylene green so I can get the light and middle, middle value trees and foreground foliage but trying to keep things soft, misty and filled with light.
So now that I've added some suggestions of grasses across the foreground using the palette knife and scraping through the rich paint, I'm going to lay the board flat and use table salt sprinkled into the damp paint and hope that, that gives me just the impression of little flowers and grasses just growing up in the foreground um, underneath this beautiful birch or aspen forest. And now it's time to leave this first layer to dry completely. So here it is, I've propped the board back up at about 20 degrees. I think I forgot to mention that at the beginning. My paper is Saunders Waterford cold press watercolour paper, uh, quarter imperial sized, and it's um, going to be painted at an angle of about 20 degrees apart from laying it flat to dry. And it's taped to my board with ordinary decorator's masking tape. So to paint in the birches or aspen trees, I've simply mixed up a dark colour from all of my colours in my limited palette. That's perylene green, sap green, burnt and raw sienna. So I've mixed them together till I get a really nice dark. Oh, I forgot to say, of course, um, I've mixed in the um, alizarin crimson as well, which is what gives me this sort of lovely browny dark. And I can simply paint over my penciled trees, maybe add a few extra ones. And if any of my lines look a bit dark, I can dab them with a tissue. And now I've mixed up a really dark value of my perylene green and I'm painting that across the tape across the bottom, carefully working around the little suggested weeds and flowers. I find the Riga brush can give me some nice brush strokes that work really well for this kind of part of the painting, but you can use any small brush, probably a small round brush with a good point will serve you well for this purpose. So I'm now going back and using a small synthetic round brush, I'm adding more of this lovely dark green across the mid-ground um, sort of misty distant hedges. I'm darkening up and I can go across, um, I can paint right across the trunks of the birch trees because I've protected the little paler areas of the bark and then darkening up around this uh, quite large tree over on the right in exactly the same way. And then onto the foliage and building up um, some better value in the foliage to indicate um, the shadow of those high canopies.
and just a bit more work balancing up the tonal values and that's the second layer just about done. Once I finish this part of it, it needs to completely dry and um, then once it's totally dry, I'll come back and I'll remove the masking fluid and we'll make some adjustments to some of the marks because they're probably a bit harsh. Masking fluid often can look a bit harsh and so we need to sort of blend it into the rest of the painting. So everything's dried nicely and so now I'm going to, to use um, what's known as a rubber cement pickup. This is made by Graphics and it's just a sort of piece of textured rubber and I use it to remove the masking fluid quite easily. But if you don't have one, you can use a clean finger or the tacky side of some masking tape to gently lift the fluid. And you can see it's coming off and leaving me some quite light but harsh marks, which we shall now have to, as I said, blend in. Um, I painted a couple of branches at the top joining onto this larger tree here um, just to see what they'd look like, but I don't like them. I think it needs to all be dark up in that canopy, so I'm going to paint over those branches uh, with some of my dark colour first, just to knock that back. I think if you think you might want an area pale, then leave it pale because you can always darken it up afterwards but if you go dark and then want to bring it back pale that's a lot harder so i'm just going over some of these marks with a dark color softening them back shrinking them down slightly changing the marks in places i won't be leaving these light areas of the bark white if you remember the photograph that i showed you at the beginning this sort of twilight scene, um, the branch, the, the trunks are sort of in shadow and also bathed with a bit of the sunset glow, but mostly in shadow. So even though we know those parts are sort of silver on the birches, that's why they're called silver birches, uh, we still need to cover them over with a sort of shadow colour in order for them to um, look more authentic within this scene. So after adding a few more darks to the tree canopies here and there, um, blending in the birch or aspen trunks and then adding some sort of slightly glowy flowers to the foreground mixed up with uh, burnt sienna, raw sienna and a bit of alizarin crimson, I'm now happy that this scene is finished. It's fairly simple. Um, I'm not as happy with the birch trees as I hoped I would be. I'm not sure whether the um, masking fluid was very effective. Um, I think next time I paint a similar scene, I'll try painting it without masking fluid. I'm just going in now and I can see, now that I'm looking at it with fresh eyes, um, with its clean white border, that it needs a few extra distant trees. So I'm putting in a few faint lines 
uh, to suggest those trees and some branches are put in across this side. I don't want too much, but I do need a few suggestions there, I think, just to complete the scene. I hope you have enjoyed watching me paint this um, atmospheric evening twilight or sunset scene and as is often the way I'm really pleased with some parts and sort of less pleased with others but that's all part and parcel of this kind of painting practice. It gives me the chance to try out ideas and discover which ones I like and which ones I'm less keen on and I can take the ideas and effects that I like forward into my next painting and leave behind the things that I felt didn't work or modify them slightly so that I can get, so that I can get them to work better in a future painting. So let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd be really interested to read them and thank you so much for watching. And thanks very much to everyone who supports this channel on Patreon. We really do appreciate you. I'll see you again soon. Take care and happy painting. Bye.